Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. Today I'm taking a look at another game that I often use in my classroom. This is a game that's excellent for education. And if you thought this is Minecraft, you're not entirely correct. This is actually a free-to-play game called Mind Test. And Mind Test is almost exactly like Minecraft. As you can see, there's, a, there's an inventory here with all these items. There is um, an inventory bar on the bottom. It sounds like Mi Minecraft, it looks like Minecraft, but it's actually an open source game that is not exactly like Minecraft. So it's actually, because it's open source and because of the way that it uses its license, you're actually free to use this any way you want, and specifically in a classroom. The reason why I actually like this is because it actually includes all the Minecraft features absolutely free and you can also use this um, on a kind of a, um, you can basically use a server feature with this on a, on a kind of a multiplayer server where your students can um, participate and do things together while you actually watch them or while you participate as well. So let me show you some of the features here. So actually one of the biggest features is the modding community. This game has quite a lot of mods and it's actually quite easy to mod. And this game uses a really cool language called Lua, L-U-A, and this language is known for its um, ease of use. It's actually easy to learn, so I'm actually even planning to introduce this game as part of my coding club, where we'll be learning the language by making mods for this game. Uh, now, you can see it basically literally looks like Minecraft. There's absolutely nothing different about it. Um, luckily, they used just the right kind of a license so that, you know, they don't get sued by Minecraft. But this game has been around for like four years now, and it's still actually kind of in beta, and they've, they've uh, officially stopped developing it because it's already quite stable. But now it's basically, uh, it's uh, kind of owned by the people because it's open source. Uh, there's quite a lot of people that often develop mods for this game, and there's quite a lot of mods out there. Uh, I'm not going to take a look at all of them, but I'm just going to show you some of the things that I've already done in my classes. Uh, so let me just start with with the main menu. So this right here is the main menu, it says Mind Test. Uh, you can obviously play as a single player, but for a classroom I often use server feature, which is basically me uh, or my server that I set up uh, on my computer. You don't actually have to have a powerful computer, you can even use um, a normal MacBook Pro or something to set this up. And oh, and this game does work on both Macs and Windows systems and also even works on Linux. And here basically you can set up server, I can actually set it up right now, type a random password right here, start a game, and it will connect to my server. And essentially this is now uh, an open server that anyone can join to. I have uh, God power so I can actually fly around and I can do all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, well, all you have to do now is give uh, your students or you know someone that you want to join um, your server, your IP address, your port number that was written right here, right here, so, uh, usually it's 30,000 by default, and your password, and then they can actually join any server. Uh, you can also, um, oh, and, and the way that they will be joining the server is by clicking the client. So here, I already have a bunch of pre-saved IP addresses that I've used with some of my students. Uh, but here, essentially, you can um, basically connect by typing the IP address, your port number, uh, this is your name, your name, uh, your actual name, and then this is the server password right here. Um, to find the, your IP address, it actually, if you're not familiar with how to find your IP address, uh, this is, I'm going to show you how to do this in Windows, so let me just show it to you in a second. So what you have to do is you have to actually open something called command, um, command window, and you do this by going into the bottom left uh, corner and clicking on, uh, I can't really show it to you, but basically you, you, you type this, you type CMD and then you press enter and we'll open this window. Now in this window, all you have to do is type IP config and click enter and it will show you a bunch of random numbers right here. And the number I'm looking for is actually right here. And I believe it's this one here, IPv4. So this is my IP address right now. Uh, and basically you can, uh, I mean, you could technically connect to this, but chances are the server will be down the time you try. Uh, and this IP address is what you use in this window here. On Macs, it's a little bit easier. All you have to do is click on, uh, so you click on the Apple thingy on top left corner, then you click on System Preferences. Unfortunately, I can't really show it to you because I'm not on Mac right now. But then um, once you go to System Preferences, you have to click on Network. And inside the Network window, there's <clears throat> one of the tabs there will show you IP address. It's going to be four numbers just like this. And so this is what how you find your IP address and then you connect to the server. Once you connect to the server, you can actually, <clears throat> essentially you can do whatever you want. So <clears throat> some of the things I've done before, are uh, there's a lot of texture packs you can add. You can actually include texture packs that will make your game look different. For example, like more historical, or you know, if you if you're trying to teach uh, students art, it can be more artsy. There's a mod you can add, and there's an online mod repository. I'm going to click on this and show you show it to you. 
Okay, this one actually doesn't work in the game. I have to actually go online. I'll show you the website where it is. So if you go to a website called mindtest.net uh, slash mods, you'll actually find this website right here with all kinds of mods <clears throat> available to you for free. And the ones that I kind of like are under Technic because this is sort of like the math and science stuff. Where it, what it does is it adds something that's similar to um, Redstone in, in, um, in Minecraft. Basically, this will allow you to, uh, to create different contraptions to basically um, uh, have all kinds of um, mechanical stuff to essentially create logic gates and uh, practice using um, logic and at the same time programming as well. Uh, there's things like world edit that adds a lot of kind of cool features to uh, to, the, to your world. There's uh, this, uh, this is like redstone as well, it's called mesocones. Uh, there is things that add more ores. Uh, more monsters and actually this is the good thing about mind test that uh, the reason why I like it over Minecraft for classrooms Other than the fact that it's free is that there's no actual monsters in this game So that you don't really have to worry about you know students being attacked or killing each other or, or dying uh, I mean you can actually attack each other, but there's no um, there's no death. There's no uh, There's no danger of dying although you can obviously include this as well because um, you can actually uh, add those monsters. But what I would actually like to do in my class or my coding class at least, I'm actually going to use this mob framework to ask my students to create their own monsters. So they're going to be making their own animals and their own uh, different monsters and including them in the game, trying to learn how, how the programming works and how the math works in this particular game. Uh, now, the cool thing about this is that Minecraft doesn't have is various types of uh, gameplay modes. So this is actually the default mode right here, but there's other game mo gameplay modes that are available that you can actually download that will kind of change the game. Uh, so for example, uh, this one is makes it more minimalistic. Let me show you what this looks like. If I create a new game right here, and there's actually different types of games you can create as well, but this is something that you can, you can play around with. And let me just show you what this looks like. So right here, this is a minimalistic mode. This is for like really, really slow computers and it makes everything more simple, a lot more kind of um, uh, basically easy to render. It doesn't require a lot of CPU power, a lot of RAM. So if you have a really old computer at school, this is probably the mode you want to use. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of items either. It doesn't give you that much, but it does give you enough to explore. So uh, this game does have a lot of different features. Now, what I really like about this is, and actually, let me show you what we did in class before. So. Um, some of the projects you can do in this game are pretty amazing. For example, this is a previous world from one of my classrooms and it, you can see there's quite a lot of destruction here that happened, but this was actually their project. And the project was uh, pretty simple. They were uh, exploring linear relations and also exponential relations. And all they had to do is uh, create a bunch of structures or even just use flat grounds and then use TNT to see um, how, many, um, how many cells or how many blocks are destroyed by each TNT block. For example, if I put one right here, and I detonated by clicking this using the torch. Uh, it will destroy this many blocks. Then what I ask my students to do is keep detonating different blocks and seeing the difference in how many blocks actually disappear. So this creates a much bigger hole. And then I show them this hole that I made just right before class. And I asked them to, well, first of all, use their knowledge of math that we studied in class to try to estimate how many blocks were actually missing here. So they had to use uh, volume calculations and various estimations to try to calculate how many blocks are missing. And then their job was to basically explore uh, the function progression. So this was two blocks, Let's, or I think this was actually three blocks. Let's try four blocks. Use this function progression to try to estimate how many blocks did I detonate right here to make this huge hole. Because this is four blocks, this is one block, this is three blocks. How many blocks is this? And they actually had a blast doing this. Um, they had so much fun that they actually, well, I don't even know how the lava ended up here, but there was quite a lot of um, really interesting discussions about you know, how to do this best, how to try to estimate this. Uh, some of the students decided to try themselves. They actually tried to test this by trying to detonate a specific number of that, uh, dynamite or TNT to try to essentially find how many, um, how many blocks I detonated. And then we also, also explored various types of materials. So is it going to be the same in the sand? Is it going to be the same in the water? And so on and so forth. So there's quite a lot of really awesome um, concept-based learning you can do with this game. Um, the other thing you can do, obviously, is... Oh, boy. Okay, that, I did not expect that. Um, the other thing you can obviously do is uh, have students create things. And, I mean, since this is a basically like free Minecraft, there's an unlimited amount of stuff you can create. You can create uh, sculptures. You can create... Um, arts projects, history projects, you can create pyramids, you can you can really go crazy here. There's quite a lot of different things you can do. And essentially this is this is mind test in a nutshell. 
Uh, it's about to become nighttime, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pause this here. So essentially, Minetest is a very, very good alternative to Minecraft, especially for schools that cannot afford Minecraft. Minecraft is a pretty expensive game, it costs about $27 per copy. Even if you buy the educational version, it's still, I think it's about $17 per copy. So if you have to buy this for like 30 students, which I, like, I have th uh, 30 students in some of my classrooms, it's just going to be really expensive. Uh, it's gonna end up pretty quickly. So this is a pretty good alternative, especially if you want to just try and see if it works for your class, because sometimes Minecraft is just not for everyone. Maybe you want to try it first before you commit to it. And um, yes, Minecraft does have a lot of different mods and different support for teachers already through Minecraft EU. But this game has a really, really friendly, um, uh, both environment and uh, um, interface and essentially uh, lots and lots of people helping each other. There's a huge community, modding community that always helps each other. And they'll be more than happy to answer a bunch of teachers that need help with this. And you have flowers as well. Look at that. I can plant flowers now. Uh, so this is a pretty awesome alternative. So do give this a try. I mean, it's absolutely free. Um, and I'm posting the link for this and also the mods that I uh, looked at before in the description below. So if you want to try this, go ahead. And uh, if you like this video, like it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about different educational video games that I often use in my class. And game you later and good luck to you. Bye-bye.